Today in After Effects, we're creating a 3D carousel expression rig whose front object is controlled by a single slider. Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Marston for the Ucremedia YouTube channel, and today we're tackling the common motion design task of making a carousel. And we are going to be using quite a few expressions, so buckle up for that. But when we're finished, we'll have a flexible rig that you can easily add or remove objects to and from, and control it all with a single slider. First, we'll go over how to set up the project. Then, we'll attach all our carousel objects to a path, and make After Effects evenly space them along this path. Lastly, we'll connect the whole rig to be controlled by a slider, add our own custom content, and make it 3D. And for those interested, you can download the project file used in this tutorial via the link in the description. And if you find our videos helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification bell, and also the like button on this video so YouTube knows to promote it to the entire internet. All right, so with all that said, let's jump into After Effects. All right, uh, I know this is the first time you're seeing this, but I just recorded like half the tutorial with my microphone off. And so yeah, I'm gonna take it again. So here's our setup straight out of the gate. We have a control layer, which is just an empty shape layer with three slider control effects on it that I have renamed to progress slider, num objects for number of objects and display object. And I'll, I'll go over all of these as we encounter them in the project. Then we have five sets of text layers and shape layers with the text layers all parented to the corresponding shape layers. And I wanna point out that in the shape layers that have these squares, the transform properties for the shape layer group the position and anchor point are both set to zero. And that's very important, and if they aren't set to zero, then these shapes won't stick to the path the way we expect when we get this rig up and running. And then last but not least, we have this circle, which is a shape layer. And I do also wanna point out here that it is not a parametric shape, it is a Bezier shape, Bezier shape, uh, and that's also important. So let me go ahead and explain real quick if you're unfamiliar with parametric versus Bezier shapes, what the difference is. So here I used the shape layer ellipse tool to create a new circle. And if we toggle into the ellipse circle, the ellipse path properties, we have a size property and a position property. So these parameters are defining this shape. So it's a parametric shape. So rectangles, ellipses, and polystars, they're all parametric shapes by default when you create them. But we need to, we're gonna use an expression that needs to reference a path property. And this doesn't have it, it has a size and a position property. So to convert a parametric shape to a Bezier path, a parametric path to a Bezier path, you just right click and say, convert to Bezier path. And now instead of size and position, we only have one property and that is the path property. And now if we, select this path, we can do anything we want with it because we have path, we have points and vertexes that are defining the bounds of this shape. This is exactly what we want. And I do want to point out that when you convert from parametric to Bezier path, that is a one-way trip. You can't convert backwards, so just be careful. All right, so let me delete this layer. And with all of this set up in place, in the next step, we're going to stick these objects to this path. So the goal of this step is to somehow get all of these objects to stick to this circular path so that then we can rotate them around and make our carousel. Now, one way to do this would be to one by one click and drag and stick each layer to the circular path and then using the anchor point tool, align up the anchor point of each to the center of the circle and then parent them to the circle layer. And then when you rotate the circle layer, they all will rotate together. Uh, of course, they don't stay straight up and down, so you'd have to create some sort of parent chain of null objects, control layers, and use an expression to offset the rotation to keep them straight up and down. Um, and that might work, but if you were to change the shape of this path, they wouldn't stick to it. They would just rotate around this anchor point. So here is how we're going to do it. First, just for clarity, I'm going to select some layers, hit Control shift alt v to toggle their visibility, which is a shortcut I didn't know until a couple days ago, and I learned it from Zach Lovett when we were recording our recent video. Thank you, Zach. And then I'm going to shy some of these layers, and you know I'm even going to shy this text layer, and I'm going to select the circle layer and hit control F, type in path to reveal all of our path properties for that layer and then select our object layer and hit P, oh, yep, hit P to reveal the position and then alt click on the stopwatch of that position so we can write an expression. So the first thing I'm gonna do is declare a variable, I'm gonna call it source 
L for source layer equals, and then I'm going to pick whip to our circle layer, hit semicolon, and then I'm going to declare a new variable, calling it source L path equals, and then I'm going to pick whip to the path property of that circle layer, hit semicolon, and then on a, another new line, I'm going to put it all together by saying source L dot two comp. And I'll explain to comp in just a second. And then I'm going to say source L path, so our path property of our circle layer, dot point on path. And then within these parentheses for point on path, we're going to input a number between 0 and 1. And if you think of your path as uh, a percentage, with the beginning of the path as 0% and the end of the path as 100% or 0 to 1, that is where, when we put in a number like 0.85 or 85%, that is where on the path it will fall. So it is about 85, it is exactly 85% of the way around this path. Now let's just pause for a second and backtrack to that two comp part of the expression and I'll attempt to explain it. Um, and I want to point out that two comp from comp, two world from world, those, for me at least, are a little bit tricky to wrap my brain around, but essentially, uh, my understanding is that you have layer space, you have the layer space of this circle layer, and then you also have the comp space that is defined by the frame of the composition. And what 2comp is doing here is converting the points on this layer space to where they fall within the frame of the composition. And that is how After Effects knows where in the composition to stick this object. Great, so we can now type in a value between zero and one, and that percentage along the path is where After Effects will place our object. But we don't wanna to have to manually type this in, and that is why on the control layer, I have this progress slider. I'm gonna lock that panel so we can easily pick whip to it. And in our expression on our property, our position property, I'm gonna declare a new variable at the very top. I'm gonna to call it P for progress equals, and then I'm gonna pick whip to our progress slider, and I'm gonna say divided by 100. And I divide it by 100 so that we can input a value between 0 and 100, and After Effects will convert that to our decimal when we input the, that variable into our final expression here by saying P in those parentheses. I'm going to click away. And so now whatever value between 0 and 100 that I input into this progress slider will be the percentage along the path where After Effects places our object. Perfect. So now we just want to apply this expression to the rest of our objects. So I'm going to right click on the position property where we have our expression and say copy expression only. I'm going to unshy these layers. I'm going to make them visible. And then I'm going to click on the label color of our object and say select label group. And this selects all the layers that have the same colored labels. And now I can just hit control or command V and it will paste that expression. Now this isn't exactly what we want because we have all of our objects stacked on top of each other at the same point in the path, but at least they are all stuck to the path. And I also want to point out that if we dig in and we change the shape of this path, then they stick to it as well. So perfect, this is a step in the right direction, and in the next step we're going to equally space all of these objects around our path automatically. So to get these objects to space themselves evenly along the path, we first need to know at what percentage along the path each one needs to sit. And we can actually calculate this by dividing the unique number of each object by the total number of objects, and that will give us a decimal that we can input into our expression. Now that's kind of confusing, so let me just show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and use object three as an example, and I'm gonna solo the object three and the circle path. So in the expression that we've already written on the position property, at the very top on a new line, I'm gonna declare a variable calling it num objects equal, and that's for number of objects, and we're gonna link it to our num objects slider. Now that num object slider is set to a value of five because we have five objects in our carousel. If we had a different number of objects, we'd have to change the slider. So now that we've fed into our expression the total number of objects, we need to find the unique number for this object. And this is why I've labeled these layer names as I have, object three, object four, because we can actually extract that digit at the end and use it in our calculation. So I'm gonna declare a new layer on a new, a new variable on a new line of our expression. I'm calling it ID equals this layer dot name dot split open parentheses, open quotation marks, and at what character 
do we want After Effects to split this layer name into an array at the hyphen? So now After Effects will separate object as one part of an array and three as the second part of the array. And in array counting, we start at zero. So if we want the second part of our array, our number three, we want to input one, zero, one. So that'll give us, if we say square bracket one, we're taking the second part of the array and that will extract number three. So now our num objects layer, num objects variable has our total number of objects. Our ID variable has our unique number of this object. And instead of using our progress slider, which was actually just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna input the calculation ID divided by num objects, semicolon. And when I click away, now our number three object is 60% of the way around our path. And so if I now copy this position by right clicking and saying copy expression only, I'm gonna go ahead and unshy and unsolo everything. I'm gonna select all the layers in this layer group and paste. Now our objects are all evenly spaced around the, uh, around the path, which is our carousel. And if I rotate this, then they move with it and they stay straight up and down. Now, this is great and it works just fine, but if we wanted to add or remove objects from our carousel and have them position themselves equally ar along our path, we would have to manually change the num objects slider value to match our number of objects. And that's fine, that totally works, but as sort of a bonus point to this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to have After Effects automatically detect how many objects are in the carousel and space them evenly. So I'm gonna use number three as an example. I'm just gonna solo that and shy the rest. And in the expression on our position property, um, I'm actually going to set our num objects slider value to zero. So we actually didn't need our num objects slider anyway, and then between the ID and our P for progress variable, uh, more importantly, before our progress variable, I'm gonna write a for loop. So I'm gonna say for, open parentheses, and now the for loop requires three arguments. The first is what number do we start at? I'm gonna say I, you could use any variable, I just use I, it's pretty common. I equals one, semicolon, not comma, to separate our arguments. Now the next one is our condition for continuation. So I'm gonna say, if I is less than or equal to this comp dot num layers, right here, then what do we do if that's true? I plus plus, so we rerun the loop. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out with a parentheses. I'm gonna open curly brackets, hit return, and now what do we want to happen in the loop? So I'm gonna say if, we're gonna use an if statement, if this comp dot layer, open parentheses, I dot name dot split, and then in those quotation marks, we'll put a hyphen, open square bracket zero, equals equals object, and I'm, I'm gonna explain all this after I'm done, object, then what do we do? Open curly brackets, then num objects variable plus equals one. So let me just walk through this real quick. So we're saying we're gonna run this loop as many times as there are number of layers in this composition. And each time you run it, you're going to check the layer with the index number that's equal to our current iteration of the loop, i. So layer index one, two, three, you're gonna check the name and you're gonna split that name at the hyphen and you're actually gonna just look at the first part of the name. And if the first part of that layer name that you're checking is the same as this string object, then what do you do? You're going to add one to our num objects variable. And so eventually it will total, this num object variable will total the number of layers whose name starts with object. So when you set this up, you have to make sure that you name your layer names with whatever you want this loop to check. So if I click away, nothing happens, and that's good because we know that the calculation is working. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this expression, copy expression only, I'm gonna unshy my layers, I'm gonna select the layer group with all my objects, hit paste, so now their positions all have that for loop, and let me show everything that's going on. Now if I duplicate one of these object layers with Control D, we can see that now there are six objects and they are all equally spaced along the path. And I can just keep doing this 
And if I wanted, I could remove a bunch of these, just hit delete. And now you can see that this is a little bit more flexible, it took a little more coding, but now we can easily add or remove objects from our carousel. So like I said though, this for loop section is a bit of a, an optional step. You can easily just manually change the num object slider to match the number of items in your carousel. And if you do use the for loop, make sure that you intentionally name your layers so that you can feed these sections of layer name into your for loop to check how many objects there are. Okay, so in the next step, we're going to actually set this in motion so that you can easily select what item is shown in your carousel. So the goal for this step is for the object whose number is equal to the value of our display object slider on our control layer to be the object that's displayed at the top of the carousel. So for example, if we input 2 as the value of this display object slider, then ideally 2 would be at the top of our carousel. Okay, so this is actually a little bit of an easier expression than the last step. I'm going to shy some layers and in the position property of one of them, I'm going to steal our for loop, just copy it. And now in the rotation property of our circle layer, uh, and our circle layer, just as a reminder, it contains our path that defines the shape of our carousel. So in the rotation property, I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch and just paste that for loop. Let's make a little more space. And we can delete this ID variable. And I'm going to declare a new variable calling it display object equals. And I'm going to pick whip to our display object slider. So now using the for loop, our expression knows how many objects are in the carousel and it's assigning that to our num objects variable. And it knows which object we want to appear on top by referencing this display objects slider. So now to make all this happen, we just need to write a little bit of arithmetic. So rotation is based on 360 degrees. So we need to figure out what the gap is in degrees between each of these objects. So we can say 360 divided by num objects. So now this will be equal to the degrees between objects. And we're going to multiply that times the object number that we want to display. Display object semicolon. Now I'm going to click away and you'll see what happens. We say we want number two, but it's displaying number three. If we say we want number one, it's displaying number four. So it's actually backwards. And if I disable this expression right here, I can show you that if we want number one on top, it's actually negative 72. It's a negative number. It's not a positive number. And this expression is giving us the positive value. So this expression right now is giving us 72, which is going to be number four. So if I re-enable this, sure enough, four is on top. So if I just say multiply by negative one, now if we say, for example, two, two is on top, three, three is on top. So with all this set up, if we go to the control layer and hit E, and then under the display object slider, we can set a keyframe. And let's just move ahead one second and we'll say from three, go to four, and then We'll move ahead another second, copy that keyframe, and then we'll move ahead another second and say four to five. I'll select these and hit F9 to easy ease. And if I hit play, we're gonna animate from three to four, and then from four to five. But obviously we don't wanna use these placeholder objects that I've been using. So in the next step, I'm gonna show you how to substitute in your own images. So to attach other content to these objects is a pretty straight ahead process. I have uh, five JPEGs in my project panel that are each thumbnails from different tutorials I've done. I'm just gonna drag one, number one dot JPEG, above the text and shape layer that is object one on the carousel. And then all you have to do is hold shift and then pick whip that layer to object one. And now it automatically positions itself where object one is. Now obviously it's too big, so on my control layer, I'm gonna add a slider control. I'm gonna rename that object, object scale. I'm gonna set that to 50% so that we'll see an immediate change. And then that panel is locked, so it'll stay there. And now I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard to reveal, to reveal the scale property of that new one.jpg. And I'm gonna pick whip the scale property to that object slider. You can see that it shrinks. So now this slider controls the scale of that JPEG. To do this for all the other objects, you can just duplicate that one.jpg or whatever you've put there. And then with that layer selected, drag and drop while holding Alt the next image in the carousel on top of that. 
and then you shift pick whip to object number two. Great, so I'm just gonna continue that up the line, shift pick whip to number three, and then alt drag and drop our three dot JPEG, duplicate, shift pick whip number four, alt drag and drop number four JPEG, and then shift pick whip number five, and alt drag and drop our number five JPEG. Great, so now we have all five of our thumbnails attached to our carousel, and they are all, the scale of all of those is controlled by this slider. And I should mention that if you make this too small, these original objects will still be visible, and you can solve that a number of different ways. You can make them guide layers, you can make them 0% opacity, um, so there you go. So in the next step, we're gonna make this 3D. So to make this a 3D rig is an extremely complicated process, so pay close attention. You hit Control or Command A to select all the layers, then you click the 3D button to make them 3D, and now the rig is 3D. Um, I know we have one problem right now that is pretty obvious that these objects are not sticking to the carousel path, and we'll fix that in a second, but if I open the rotation property of this circle layer by hitting R on the keyboard and I play with the rotation, you can see that this is truly a 3D rig. Um, so to solve this problem where they aren't sticking to the path, you just open the position property of any of the objects where that expression is applied, and then come all the way down to where it says 2Comp, and instead type 2World with a capital W. And now it's sticking to the path. So I'm just going to copy this expression, unshy these layers, select layer group, and hit paste. And if I were to go into this circle path and change my X rotation to 90 degrees, now the object that is facing, that is closest to the viewer, is the object that is selected in our display object slider. And with a little bit of styling, you can create something like this, or something silly like this, which is about how my brain feels after doing so many expressions. Whee! So that's the whole tutorial. I know there was a lot of expressions, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.